so I wanted to make a movie accurate Mark 50 arc reactor, but there really wasn't all that much stuff out there. So my buddy Kurt and I decided to cat up a storm and create our own from the ground up. And we did a lot of iterations of this thing and made a few prototypes. And thanks to great reference photos like this one by at Melania Cosplay, we were able to make a pretty damn good prop. Now our prop clipped onto our chest magnetically, and it stays on super well. Even if you jump up and down or just shake around, it's not coming off. We wanted to avoid having something really saggy, so we designed this chest strap system, which works when you either wear the arc reactor outside your shirt or under it. And we wanted to have different cores that we could change out in this system, so we wanted one that had movie accurate lighting, but that didn't require any soldering. And we also made this core, which features a wireless charger that's universal. And it's even capable of allowing you to do fast charging as well. But the real kicker is that even if you're wearing it, it'll still do the wireless charging with phones, so people can walk up to your chest and charge their phone. And of course, I love me some burning lasers, so we're going to do a variety of different cores that feature burning lasers. And I do a lot with blue pyrotechnics as well, so this is a perfect way to get a real-life Unibeam. We have plans to add a digital voice assistant, all kinds of biometric reading stuff, uh, an LED that's 100 watts, which is about the equivalent of like four car high beams, and we can do infrared cameras, night vision, all that kind of stuff. But what this video is about is about making a base system that has enough real estate inside that we can start stuffing all these other really cool things inside. Now this whole thing has to be 3D printed. And of course, if you're going to 3D print something, you might as well do it in the vibranium of plastics, thermoplastic urethane, or TPU. This stuff is super, super strong. It can withstand hammer blows from whatever kind of hammer you have laying around the shop. I've always been pretty happy with the results that I've gotten with this particular plastic on a lot of my other projects. It's turned out a lot better than the PLA plastic I've used in a lot of other projects, which left in a hot car will just fill up your garbage can. Most of this project was printed in TPU plastic, except for the parts that needed to be transparent, and those were printed in ABS plastic, which is a lot easier to sand and you can get a really smooth, glassy finish on it, which we wanted for the light diffuser. Now this thing's pretty easy to put together. A lot of it can just be glued together with a super glue that's meant for plastics. You'll also want some of this Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 filler and sandable primer. You're going to need a few medium coats of this stuff in order to seal up any of the layer lines that kind of show up on this prop. Once you've applied the first layer, you can get in there with an X-Acto knife and you can just kind of cut away any of like the excess junk. And you can use super glue in order to fill in the layer lines in order to save yourself some time later on down the road so you don't have to do as many filler primer coats. And anywhere where there's glue joints, you'll want to fill in too. That way your prop will look nice and clean like the real thing, and you'll have these smooth edges. Now these honeycomb structures on the sides can show a lot of the stepping from the 3D printer. So in order to clean that up, after hitting it with the filler primer, I just rub on it with the back of a drill bit like so. And it cleans it up real nice. One issue with the filler primer is that it does kind of cover up the details, so you may have to go in there and kind of pick some of the filler primer off to keep the details crisp. There are some areas where you'll have to rough it up and kind of fill it in in order to make it actually look like the movie prop. You can just look at the reference images to see where that is. You want to wet sand this with some 400 or 600 grit sandpaper, which tends not to leave scratches. And after sanding and filling this about five times, it won't even look like a 3D printed part anymore. Next you'll need 32 6mm by 2mm neodymium magnets, and you'll want to mark one of the polarities on each of the magnets. You want to make sure that whatever you use to mark them dries before you stack them back together, that way you don't get confused with extra marks on your magnets. You'll need some clear epoxy, and preferably some nitrile gloves so you don't get this gook all over yourself and everywhere. Mix it up good and then apply it into the little slots for the magnets. You may want to focus on just gluing one particular direction of magnet first and letting it dry before gluing in the other ones. That way you don't end up with some horrendous mess of gloopy magnetic epoxy horribleness. 
you want to glue the magnets in the pattern that you see here. You'll also want to use this same pattern when gluing the magnets to the magnetic back plate. It's important to coat the back of the front grille and the back of the main body with a bit of the primer filler to prevent light leaks. You want to find and mark the center of the chest strap on the body harness. You also want to find the center on both the magnetic back plate and the magnetic chest strap cover and mark those as well so that you can get them lined up on the center of the chest strap. Now it's time to add the cool white fairy lights into this to light the prop up. You want to wire together the electronics panel as seen here. You'll need some hot glue in order to put these things in the right place. Once you get them glued in there, you'll want to take a look at the other side with the lights on to make sure that you actually have the lights in there straight, so you don't end up with asymmetric lighting on this whole thing. And you want to check your work as you go gluing in the lights to make sure that everything is aligned well. I'm not showing all the wire in between the lights, but there is actually quite a bit there, and you'll end up with something that looks like a pretty bad rat's nest by the time you're done with this. But don't worry, you've got plenty of space to tuck all that in when you're done. Now I did have one part that really frustrated me. Right when I got to the end of putting in all the time to put this together, the lights went out on me. Oh no. Oh, but it really wasn't all that big of a deal. It was just a little bit of a loose wire on the very end of the whole thing. So when I kind of just crimped it together with some pliers, it was fine. And I haven't had any issues since. So these are pretty durable. The last part of the wiring here is just the part that goes to the actual battery pack on this. You want to kind of tuck part of that wire in and glue it, but you want to leave yourself enough wire that you can actually pull the battery pack out later to change your batteries. And you'll of course want to tuck in all the extra loose wires and kind of glue them down in a few different places. Then you want to put the electronics panel cover over the whole thing, but don't forget to put in your neodymium magnets and make sure they're pointed the right way. Now you just have to glue on the battery box to the electronics panel cover. And that can just be done with some super glue. Putting together the light diffuser is now the next step. You might have to sand the inner piece a little bit in order to get it to fit in there, but it should be a nice snug tight fit so it all stays together. Now mine still looks pretty glassy and that's because I printed it directly to the glass bed. But even still, I took it through 300 all the way up to 2000 grit sandpaper. That way it had a nice glassy finish when I was done. I used these alcohol inks in order to give it the right tint to make it actually look like the movie prop. I first hit it with the blue and I just hit it with a light coat on both the front side and the back side. And I checked it with the light panel to make sure that it was actually the right pale blue shade. Now if you look at the actual movie prop, when it's turned off, it actually has like a green color to it with a little bit of a blue hue. So I hit the whole thing next with a bunch of the green. And then I checked it too with the light panel again to make sure it's the right shade. Due to my camera's like tint and white balance, it looks a little bit bluer here, but in reality, if you do this yourself, it's actually gonna look like the right tint when you have it in front of you, just like the movie prop. And in this picture here of the movie prop, you can actually see that there's a bit of a triangular pattern and a honeycomb pattern on the diffuser. For the outer diffuser, you'll want to make sure that you've got it set to the honeycomb infill pattern at 40% infill. For the inner diffuser, you want to make sure that the infill pattern is set to triangular and about a 25% infill. If you position your pieces properly on the printer, then the polygons on them should be pointed in the right direction to match the movie prop. Either of the spray paints that I have here are a great choice for spray painting the main body. I gave it about three coats, leaving maybe 10 minutes in between each coat for dry time. And then I used some testers gold paint in order to do some of the details that needed to be done up with that color. You may want to try and paint this with some white gloss paint and then go over that dried paint with some graphite powder. This is a pretty cool technique to actually give your props a realistic metallic finish. 
and I've left some links in the description below to show you how to do this and the type of results you can get. In future iterations of this prop, I'll probably actually use this technique instead. But to finish off what we did here, I just hit it with some poly acrylic, and I probably did about two or three coats of this, letting it dry in between each coat. To give it the appropriate weathered look that the actual prop has, I just used some acrylic black paint mixed with an equal volume of water, and mixed it all up to create my wash solution. And I just applied this liberally over the whole thing, trying to get it in every little nook and cranny, and then just using a wet paper towel to kind of wipe it off. Once you slap it all together, it looks pretty darn good. We were really happy with the result we were able to get. Nico over at Nico Industries did something really cool. He actually took the base that we made and combined it with this really cool I Love You 3000 statue that he made. And it turned out pretty awesome. So you can go over and get that over in his page. His arc reactor isn't designed to be worn around like ours is, so if you have both of our files, then you kind of get the best of both worlds. The how-to video for turning this Mark 50 arc reactor into a wireless charger is already mostly filmed, and a movie-accurate Spider-Man eye shutter system with a heads-up display is pretty far along already in development. There's tons of other stuff that's coming to this channel, all sorts of 3D printed instruments, and all kinds of new pyrotechnic gear and tutorials. You can find links in the description in order to be able to get the 3D files to make this arc reactor yourself. There's also links in the description for an Instructable, so you can take this even further and get into all the nitty gritty detail to do this even better than we did here. And you can support this channel on Patreon to help us build this channel in my cave with a box of scraps. So until next time, happy building. Alpha. Bye. Red.